Hi, uh, my name is Mike. You might know me online as uh, Jube, D O K. Um, what I'm going to do for you here today is I'm going to video design a boxing game or the next boxing game for you. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on uh, the way I think it should work. Uh, I'm going to use myself. I'm going to mimic a lot of stuff and then and, and occasionally bring in use of the 360 controller to show you what I mean. Alright, let's get it going. Okay, so the first change I would want to make is we're going to change stamina to energy because I think it just sounds better to say everything we do takes energy rather than everything we do takes stamina. Okay. So we're going to go with an energy system. Stamina is out the fucking window. Okay? So with energy, the whole system is you would have like this. You would start a fight with this much energy. Now, you can't replenish energy through a fight. Right? To replenish energy, we need to eat. We need to drink stuff. Okay? So you can't replenish energy in that sense during the fight. So you start with this much energy, and it's about energy management. You train to have 12 rounds and to be able to go 12 rounds. Now, some fighters can do it a lot better than others. Right? You've seen fighters fade around eight, nine rounds, and they just can't finish off the fight, and that's why they're not champions. So, energy. And we're going to say that everything you do in the ring takes point of energy away. So, one point of energy, two points of energy. So that's steps, leans, punches, blocks. We want everything to cost energy. Now, it's like, oh, well then, how do we get it back? Well, what we're going to do, we're going to have a replacement system to uh, return energy in the form of adrenaline. So what you'll do is a landed punch is going to get you some adrenaline back. Every time you land a punch, you're going to be like, yeah, let's get him again, let's get him again. So you're going to have some adrenaline from landing punches, and so that's how you get it back. You get it back from being successful in the ring, from being successful in the fight. Now, through tuning and testing, you're going to be able to determine how much adrenaline you should be getting back from landed punches and whether or not you want to make that equal on a flush punch or a strafing punch. So... By default, though, in my head, I'm saying in three, three energy points. So if I come in and I hit a jab at the guard and then hit you with the left hook as I step in, three points of energy gone, but replaced as adrenaline. Now, it may seem a little extreme to only be giving adrenaline to the players as they land punches. There's other positive things you can do in the ring. And the other major one is making your opponent miss. So when you slip and get out of the way of punches, you should be getting some adrenaline back in place of the energy it took to slip and avoid those punches. Now another thing we're going to want to do with the energy system is have burst energy. And so what I mean by this is having a reserve of energy uh, for just for a burst, for being able to think of Roy Jones Jr. Just all of a sudden outside slip in, making you miss, looking for his chance, looking for his chance, and then he comes in with a blazing quick four or five punch combination, right? That would be his burst energy. And one of the ways that we can set that up uh, and allow users to build that burst is to have that burst building as you are slipping punches and you're and you're moving. This would reinforce the idea that in boxing we're not just sitting there going over and over and over again. Okay? There's times where you're inactive or seemingly inactive as your opponent is wasting energy because you're making him waste that energy. And then you look for your point, you look for your counter, you look for your way in, and then you hit him with a burst. So we'd have that burst energy, and the burst energy would be like a top, a topper on the end of the energy bar that as the energy bar goes down, your burst energy is always there, and, it's, and you can always build into it. The meter is exactly the same, uh, and it just goes down as your energy goes down. And so the idea would be whatever your energy is at the start of each round 
then you have this topper on top of it in which you can build adrenaline up into that and now you have your burst energy meter which allows you to just pounce so now with having this burst energy topper uh, what's the question maybe what's the difference between going in for a five punch combination with your regular energy or going in with the five punch combination of the burst energy you built up. Well, the burst energy, because it is like this explosion of a combination that you go in for, it's going to be the punches that land in that combination will just mean more. They will be stronger punches. They will be punches that are before the muscles start to get tired. Next up, the counter system. The counter system of fight night is just ridiculous. It's a joke and it should be thrown out the window. There should be no pause in action whatsoever. A counter is knowing or seeing what your opponent is throwing and landing your punch before his does. That's what a counter is. It's not blocking or slipping a punch and then resetting and then getting your counter in with no matter what punch it is because that's the way it works right now is you can counter any punch with any other punch it's just a punch landed after the counter window has opened that's it and that's stupid you know to me I've always seen that as that's like you know playing a hockey game and you get like you do this perfect deke so it allows you to have like this point of when you can shoot and the goalie can't react to the shot it's it's fucking retarded so counter system gone in terms of real counters, in terms of me as a player versus my other player, and me baiting him, trapping, setting traps, getting him to throw what I want him to throw so that I can counter it, predicting my opponent and being successful at it. Okay, so another new feature. Let's say I would want the bounce. Now we've all seen Manny Pacquiao get up on his toes, right? And get that bounce in there. You've seen De La Hoya do it. Some boxers have it, some boxers don't. Some boxers are plotters, but usually the movers, they have the bounce. And this allows them to pounce in, get their shots off, and get back out of the ring. That's going to take more energy. It's also why you don't see a fighter do it all fight long. So for the pounce, I think in something as simple as left click on the stick, Put you into your boxer into a little bouncing. Left click again, and then he'll go back to flat foot. Benefits of being on the bounce, as I previously stated, is just being able to hop into range, get your punches off, and hop out of range fast, taking up more energy. If you're good at it, you get that all back in adrenaline because you choose your you choose your attacks, right? intelligently. So once again, left click, you bounce in, click it again, and you're back to flat footed. Now people might say that that's a bad control option. In Through testing, once again, you can explore different ideas. It's, the basic is pressing a button, you go into one mode, you press a button, and then back to the other. You can even use the uh, D-pad for that kind of stuff. Okay, something to be added in regards to uh, bouncing and pouncing and that is uh, another difference between it and being flat flat footed is the speed and distance in which you can jump in and jump out versus just stepping in and stepping out so flat footed more fine tuned smaller movements the bounce larger faster lunges uh, in and back out of range Now, one thing I think is very important when making games, especially competitive online games, and even more so one versus one type competitive online games where you have no AI factors, it's just me versus you. And that has to be control must always beat spazzing or spamming, which people call it. Okay? You have to show that you are in full control of your character, your boxer and not be rewarded for being having zero control. Now, the current game rewards people for having zero control. Uh, things like spinning to open up your counters or just moving wildly to open up your counters. 
you have to get counters intelligently, and that's knowing what your opponent is doing and landing your punch before they do. Okay, so you're gonna want to eliminate all types of systems where you can just spaz for control. Right now, certain ways that you can do it. One is think right now of jab spamming. People just jab spamming, jab spamming. Problem with the engine, I feel, is that every time is a full strength jab. Now they have some sort of anaerobic fatigue, which we all believe is bullshit. Uh, I don't think it ever really worked. But the idea of if you're spazzing that jab button, it's got to be more like, oh, get away from me, get away from me, right? Whereas a controlled jab or double jab is going to be crisp and clean and sharp and strong. It's in control. But as soon as you start detecting that button going off like crazy, people using modded controllers and all that kind of stuff, you have to make that more like I'm a coward who's cowering away and I'm going, oh, oh, oh. Anyone doing that, you're just going to come over top and you're going to fucking kill them anyways, right? They're playing scared. They're going to get hit. Okay, next up, a block versus a parry, okay? And so a parry would be meeting the punch before it gets to its target. Parry, 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 parry. This is usually you're catching the punch. If you see the punch coming in, you should be able to catch it. Just bang, bang, bang. Okay, a parry and the block is straight up blocking. Letting punches land on your gut. Blocking. How to differentiate this within the control scheme, I'm thinking a system like parry going out and meeting the punch. So as you pull in the trigger halfway, as you pull in the trigger halfway, well, you're going out and you're meeting. So you would have the boxer uh, AI control side to side in this type of system. So if it's a punch coming in from his left side, he's going to go out and parry it that way. And so it's just little short, little short parries if you see the punches coming, versus going into a full block, pulling it and holding it will let send you into your guard, depending on what type of style that you pick. But that's going to send you into a full guard. Now, blocking strength and all that kind of stuff, I think that just, that needs to go. Um, it is a video game. <laughs> we have to remember that. And so if you think about other successful fighting games, a blocking is as simple as holding a button. I think that's what they tried to do with Champion. They wanted to make it one button blocking and not be so specific about the blocking, especially since they, you're on a side view and it's not as easy to see punches. Whereas in the real environment, he can't use his body to mask that punch. That's what a jab's doing. That's what a punch landing in your face is doing. It's masking what's coming next. The other side of blocking is, like, like I was saying, because it's a game, is you want, if I'm in my block, on my guard, you're not doing much damage to me. You can be throwing punches, wasting energy. Uh, we've all seen Claudie just completely defensive and you can't land much. We saw uh, Donaire fight. Navarez, whatever, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, but that's another guy who just didn't come out of the guard, and it makes it extremely hard to hit people, but you're just not going to win a fight like that. So if a guy wants to fucking play a whole fight with his guard up, he should be able to effectively block, whereas right now, in champion, holding that guard up, the whole system is about not holding the guard up and just perfect block, perfect block, perfect block. And all you did was once again open up spamming. It's more effective to mash the button than it is to be controlled with the button. So the block definitely needs to be strengthened and you it, you need to be able to set up your shots. If the guy is going to go into the turtle, he is, should definitely become harder to hit, but he gets no points and he just wastes energy doing it. punches. Now, I think Four's uh, stick, right stick for punches, was a lot better than Champion. Champion, I think they tried to oversimplify it. And I think this goes down to, has to it being, once again, me versus you in a video game. So it's a, I want my skill level 
if I have a higher skill level at controlling this than you do, I should be doing better. And that's how four was in the sense that someone who was better at the sticks was throwing better and faster combinations than someone that sucked at the sticks. So what you get right now is once again a system that rewards spazzing where you can just rock the stick around and get combos and punches that you don't even understand <laughs> how you're throwing them. It's just, oh, wow, this works. So the system of like the art to throw the hook and the, and the you know the slider art to throw the straights and stuff like that, I think was a lot better and showed and really rewarded control over spazzing. Whereas the new system, you throw punches by accident, just and as your thumb comes off, you move that stick a little bit more, and boom, you have you know three more punches thrown that you want to, and then you get the whole thing of guys like saying you're a spammer and blah blah blah, whatever. Punches get thrown by accident if you're trying to be fast on the sticks in the champion method, but you never get thrown by accident when you're fast on the sticks in round four. So I think round four system is a lot better, and you need to go back to that because it's a system that rewards me being better than you. And it should. I think EA maybe puts a little too much focus on the accessible to all. You need to start separating their games into like arcade and sim. Uh, different search options, which will be different sliders. And a whole nother story, let's not go with that. Okay, so more with punching. We've all seen fighters leave their jab out. Muhammad Ali would leave his jab out and measure people, put it on their forehead and stuff like that. Now, how could you replicate that in the game? Stick up for jab and leave it there. Now your, your fist stays out and you can move around the ring with your jab out. Okay. We've also seen Rigondo mimic punches that he's going to throw, just kind of in slow-mo and then reverse it. We can get all that with a control scheme that goes, once again, back to round fours, where we can, if I want to throw my, my hook out slow and telegraph it, then I'll just rock my stick slower. I'll just go out, rock it up, and rock it back down. And it'll be a Rigondo-style punch. Or... When I want to get that hard hook in, I'm going to throw it quick. I'm going to be on the stick and just throw it quick. Boom, boom. And then you'll get like your full force hook in there. Now, obviously, you're going to want to limit the speed in which it translates based on, on the boxer himself. So that if you do have a modded controller and you have it going really quick, it can only be so fast. It can only be as fast. So it's not going to be directly as fast as you do it. I think you get the picture. So so that you can faint, you can throw half punches. So if I only if I only rock the stick out halfway on my hook, I can go stop it short and do a check. Or I can stop it and then finish it and do a check hook. So stuff like that. And then it will open up people's individual styles in the way that they can play the game. And they're not gonna be so reliant on this style beats this style every time. It's like, it's rock, paper, scissors with the game right now. Okay, another thing that needs to go or change is the 2D plane that you're forced to fight on. Now, for an example, I'd say go look at the Tekken engine in terms of the way that they can get to the side and behind opponents uh, before the opponent recorrects. Like they still have an auto recorrect system to get you facing the guy, but it'll be delayed so that the players can get to the side and can slip in behind someone. Now with boxing obviously the slipping in behind is just for looks, just so getting off the ropes. Um, things that you've seen uh, Manny Pacquiao do, you've seen Sergio Martinez do it, uh, or even getting in, throwing your punch, and then off a, a clinch, being able to step around and on the center of the ring, uh, reverse position with your opponent. So you want to be able to allow that kind of stuff without making it look uh, retarded <laughs> and silly with like this constant, if you play, I play wide, so I don't have to, to worry about that, but on champion, it's a certain camera angles that if the background is constantly spinning and it's constantly in a blur because of the way it works. But 
Uh, so you'd want to free that up a little more and not make it look so transparent that you're stuck on this 2D plane that is just basically just rotating within a box. So another be benefit of taking things off this artificial 2D plane that you're forced upon is certain things like turning your your opponent and being able to land punches as if you do a land at one two and you can sidestep him and he comes at you, you have a very powerful hook that can land on him as he's coming forward into the punch. And this only happens if you can get to those side angles and really change up the angles on, on uh, your opponent. All right, upper body movement. I think uh, there needs to be some changes in upper body movement. And I think that, uh, like right now, going forward on the stick is actually going to bring you down. Okay, whereas I think you need that ability to showboat, to be a hot shot, and to be able to do little taps forward on the stick, and stick your chin out, give your opponent a target, and then when he swings, and you can pull it back. And little back taps on the stick as well would be little little back head movements. Whereas right now it's very stiff looking, little taps on the stick are, are really jerky movements, and there isn't a good flow to it. You need that good flow for your upper body movement. And you're also going to want to create different styles of upper body movement. Ones that are, you know, because there are fighters that like to really, I'm going to go off screen here when I show you this, but there are fighters that go really low. Pee wee, um, sorry, sweet pea <laughs> would be one of them. We'll pop that. We'll edit that out. Uh, sweet pea would be one of them. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, perfect example in his in his uh, fight against Guerrero, uh, getting really low, getting under the punches, and not all fighters have that style. Uh, and then if you go to so that's one where he's more bending over to get to it, whereas someone like Cotto gets low, but he gets low with his legs. He's not uh, bending as much, and he's staying more straight up and down, and really getting low. Andre Ward, another one that does that style. Now, round four, another thing that needs to come back from round four and go into the next fight night game or boxing game is that effect of a big punch landing that isn't, doesn't put the player into a stun. Because it happens in boxing, right? You get nailed with a shot and it moves your opponent, but it's not necessarily putting them in a stun state or close to a knockout or knockdown. And round four had that, and it was that one where they would go get punched and turn off to the side. It was also uh, something that prevented the ugly trades that you see where you land three, four flush punches on someone, and all they do is keep throwing back at you, and their punches are just as effective as if they didn't just get hit three times in the face, or counters that open up after getting hit three times in the face, and on the fourth time you get a counter and you one counter. Sorry, and your one counter becomes more powerful than the three punches that they just landed on you. Stuff like that needs to be removed. The guy that is landing punches is beating the shit out of the other guy. It's just the way it is. Another thing that I think needs to be removed is the ability, I think this is absolutely ridiculous, the ability to trade body punches for headshots. Okay? And we've all seen trades in boxing, but what you don't see is trades where one guy's down, nailing at the body, and the guy's head would be right here, <laughs> and trading headshots to those body shots. The headshots are always going to win. As powerful as we know body shots can be and what it does to opponents in the long run, you just don't see punch numbers that show that. Boxers, they want to hit you in the face. It's just you should want to hit the guy in the face because the face is going to do more damage uh, and make you look better than the body. So uh, this is one thing as another thing that the block of having a proper block system would avoid those type of numbers. Like we're talking numbers where you'd fight a 10 round fight and have over 300 punches landed to the body. Oh, sometimes over 600 punches thrown to the body. Show me those numbers in a real boxing match. You just won't see it. Knockouts and stuns. I think those uh, moments can use a lot of improvement. They've been very stale and the same for a very long time. Uh, stuff like 
when you land a shot and you put a guy into a stun and it was such a powerful shot it sends him stumbling across the ring and it's those four or five steps of a stumble before he can get his block up and if you can imagine that Matt uh, managed to pounce on him while he's in that state then you could finish him off type thing you also need those moments of and we've all seen it uh, you, you get a guy in a stun state and, and he's on the ropes and he's blocking and all of a sudden he becomes the best defensive fighter you've ever seen. You need to remove that. And also, if you have a guy in that stun state who's hurt, you have a ref that sees that his man is hurt and you're just, you decide to just keep pounding on him because you want the ref to stop it. If that guy's not throwing anything back, then you should win the fight. You know, obviously you don't want a 100% type thing. You're going to have like, you know, a little system where the ref could make a bad call and make a good call. Stuff like that. End a fight early or just not end it where he should have and someone ends up getting knocked the fuck out. Alright, so here's one that I consider uh, a little less important but something that needs to be said nonetheless and it is accuracy. I don't know why this is a stat I'm sure there's uh, plenty of discussion uh, that can be had with this. People it will feel differently, uh, but I am in no means a pro boxer. I've never been in the ring uh, against someone who's trying to punch me in the face back. Uh, but what I do know is when I go to the gym and I am hitting the heavy bag, I don't miss the heavy bag. It's, <laughs> it's there, it's stationary, and I can't miss it. It has nothing to do with accuracy. Missing punches isn't an accuracy thing. It is the opponent did something to make me miss the punch. And I think uh, that slipping and missing punches has to do more with that instead of accuracy. Accuracy creates what we see. I think this accuracy rating is why we see things like um, punches hitting invisible walls because puncher's accuracy rating, uh, you know, didn't beat someone else's head movement rating or something like that. Even though the punch should have still followed through and hit, it doesn't because of accuracy. And so I think making people miss is uh, is what you have to do if you're not moving. If you're not a moving target, then he should hit, be able to hit you every time. Now, there's a lot of design work that can be done outside the ring. Okay. There's tons of presentation that uh, is is just fail in my my opinion. The whole legacy mode fail in my opinion. I don't like the way it works. Um, I'm not going to go into any detail of that design. Let's just say that there is a lot of design work that can be done to breathe new life into those areas of the game. Uh, but since gameplay to me is most important, that's why I'm focusing on all these gameplay elements and elements within the ring. Okay, so I've had a lot of this stuff racing through my head over the past couple of weeks. Uh, you know, started putting Champion in and, and playing with boxers and trying to tune them a little bit better. Um, so I think. I've gotten everything out that I wanted to. I might have missed some stuff I can add later uh, if I remember them. Or if there are elements that you think I have skipped over and you'd want to hear how I think those would work and how those would go down, then by all means, uh, ask me questions and I'll try and answer them. Uh, but uh, I think that's it. These are major fundamental changes that I think can and should be made to the next boxing game whether it be Fight Night or some new developer in the boxing race that wants to make a game that we'll all buy and enjoy. All right, thanks for your time. Bye.